Hepalema, good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Hey, Hepale Karo. Karo. God bless you, sir. Bless you, ma. Bless you, ma. Yeah. So, so yeah. Still, still continuing looking at Proverbs chapter three. Uh, we're looking at verse two yesterday. Looking at the reward of uh, putting God's word, remembering God's law, and programming our life according to His word. You know, that was the important thing God said about the New Testament. You know, God said the Old Testament. You know, where people will gain righteousness by just oh, this. <laughs> You know, he said he was going to put their law, his law in their heart. That was God, God was going to differentiate the New Testament. You know, God looked at the Old Testament. It was like, mm, it's not a, it's not able to produce the righteousness I want. You know, he did not meet the mark. God, he did not make the mark of what God wanted in that the people were, have the law in their head. They were only just conscious of, oh, all right, it does. This is not that. That is not that. Oh, have you checked? Uh, uh, it, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a mental ascent to what mm. God wanted. They did not let it go beyond their head to their heart, right? God says in the New Testament, what what will work out the righteous demand that I want, the righteous requirement that I want, is that people will not just have the, what I want in their head but they will have it in their heart. It will become a part of them. They will, they will embody what I want, right? That is what is a difference in the New Testament. You know, God's, God's requirement is still the same, but it was not something that we're going to, it's not something that we're carrying our head, but it, we embody it, we, we marry it, we become one with God's requirement. So he says, I will not put my law in their head, but I'll put it in their heart. I'll put it in their being. I'll put it in their subconsciousness. I'll put it, they will internalize it so that they can then leave it from as if it is it, it is their own. They wrote the law. They will become one with what I want them to be. Mm. Right? So God has then not called us to a religion whereby we we have a mental ascent to it. He, mm. he wants us to read His Word, and He wants His Word to become flesh in us. He wants us mm. to have oneness. He, he wants us to to hone it, hone it as if we are the ones that wrote that which He wants us to do. So it's not mm. as much of a thou shalt, oh thou shalt. Have you said read what God has said? No, he wants it to be that we are we understand the reason why he's saying so, such that we 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 marry it, we become it one it. It. Yes, it, it, it's it's as if you know. So when they wake up us from in the night, it's we can we can it, it's part of us. That is God's that's God's requirement, and that's what God is saying in Proverbs chapter three. Here it says, "Don't forget my law." But keep my commands in your heart. Keep it in your being. Make it part of you. Don't make it to be something that you do on Sundays only or on Saturdays only or when you go to church only. Let it be a part of you that you can live it 24-7, 365 days of the year, right? It, 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 it becomes a normal way, a way of life for you. It's not that I am a Christian. That is why I'm doing it. Is that I'm doing it because that is who I am. That is who I have become, right? I am loving people because that is who I am, not because I'm doing it. Oh, so that they will know I'm a Christian. I'm going to evangelize. Oh, so that's why I'm loving people. Oh, let them see Christ in me because I'm evangelizing. Mm -hmm. It becomes your normal, your way of living, your way of doing things. Yeah. It's only when that happens that you get the reward of being, right? That's why, that's what God was telling Joshua in Joshua 1.8. He says, don't let it depart. Don't just do it on Sundays. Don't just do it on Saturday. Yeah. Don't just do it when you're going to war. Let yeah. it be a part of you. See it continually. Yeah. See it continually. Become it. Again, that's Second Corinthians chapter four, where it says that as we look into into the in, in, as we look as in a glass, you know, we look unto the Lord as in a glass. We are transformed into the same image, right, from one level of glory to another. It's a transformation. 
It is not just a mental ascent. It's a transformation. It's something that affects the whole of our being. It affects the way we relate. We relate with our wife, with our spouse. It affects the way we relate with our children. It affects the way we relate with our neighbors. It affects the way we relate with our co-workers. It affects the way we relate to people in church, outside of church. You know, there is no demarcation. It is our life. That is what God is asking of us. That is what gets the reward. You know, mm. that is what God becomes pleased with. You know, he says that in Hebrews, he's saying that when you do this, no one would then be able to be asking from his friend, do you know the Lord? Mm. You don't have to because you have, it's seen in you, you have become it. You become like the disciples when they said they, they, they knew that they are being with Christ mm-hmm. because they are being in Christ, transform them, be, make them new, make them different. Second Corinthians chapter five began, was working in their life that if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, right? They are being in Christ has changed them. That's what the law, God wants his commands to do for us. Mm-hmm. You know, God will help us. Let's pray. So looking at Proverbs 3, 2, when we, when we marry God's word, you know, God says in Proverbs 3, 2, that it will give us length of days, long life, and peace it will have to us. And that's more like Jesus Christ telling us in uh, Matthew, uh, I believe it's 6, is it 33, says that, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, seek ye first the kingdom of God. When you seek first the kingdom of God, you marry the kingdom of God. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Seek to be compatible with his kingdom and his righteousness. Seek that your life will become one with his kingdom and his righteousness. When you do that, that will that which you become will produce everything that you need. That you which you become will produce everything that you need. Seek first his kingdom and every other thing. He didn't say some things. Every other thing shall be added unto you because when you become the person you become will produce, you know, just like Mm -hmm. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want because I have Mm -hmm. rightly aligned with the shepherd as a sheep for as long as I'm a sheep. I shall not want because the shepherd takes care of me. Mm -hmm. I'm in perfect shepherdship alignment with God. I shall not want. Right. When we when we when when we when we come into our right alignment in God and with God, all our needs are taken care of. And not just our needs, our wants also. Right. Mm -hmm. God delights in the prosperity of his own it's not just that it's a met is that we he says it will give us all things to enjoy right mm-hmm. it will give us all things to enjoy so just giving us to meet our need it's giving us so that we can enjoy we can enjoy we we we, we can we can rejoice in the provision that the father mm-hmm. has given to us God delights in us having the things we need, not just not just the things we need just to give us barely enough, mm. but give us such that we can rejoice in it, mm. right? The Bible talks, talks about that. He, 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 he wants that his glory will fill the earth, even as the world has covered mm. the sea. The word glory is, is weightiness, is happiness, mm. right? Just meeting barely enough is not weighty. There's no mm. glory barely enough. Glory mm. means abundance, well mm. provided for a rich provision, right? That's what God wants to do for us. Our part mm. is to rightly align with Him, cause our life to be in, in alignment with Him, cause His word to marry our life, cause our life to marry His word, cause our life to be one with His word, with His law, with His commands. Is His own job is to give the provision. Our job is not to go after the provision. Our job is to align our lives with him. His, mm. his part is to provide for us, to take care of us, right? Because he's our sheep, we are the shepherd. We, he's our shepherd, we are the sheep, you know? That ties in also with the command, right? Exodus twenty twelve says, honor your father, mother. It says that's, that's, the only prom- that's the only commandment with a promise, when we honor our father and mother, when we honor God as our God, our creator, our father, 
you know, when we honor the people he has placed on top of us, our parents, our authority mm -hmm. figure, guidance, or whoever, we honor the authority he has set in our life, then we'll gain the promise. It says that's the only command that has a promise, right? There's a promise in, in rightly aligning ourselves in God. When we do that, it says that we will get the benefit that we will see here in Proverbs 3, 2. It says that our days may be long upon the land which the Lord our God has given us. Same thing we see in Psalm 91, 16. It says with long life, it will satisfy us and show us salvation. You know, that is God's part. Our part is to align ourselves. Our part is to is to is to cause to be one with his word that we read his word we we say god make me it's like the prodigal son when he came to himself when he came to himself when he came to his right senses when he could see clearly he said i will go to my father and say make me you know make me because when i'm made then everything that i need will be provided for right it's make me make me make me all that you want me to be make me all that you created me to be make me your 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 handy work that you created for good works mm. help me to be aligned with the good works that you have prepared for me before you brought me onto the scene help me to be aligned in and with you may god help us in jesus name amen 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 go ahead amen. Man. yeah you said it all, the love of Christ, it shows in our life when it aligns in every area of our life. It's just like um, when we nearly accepted Christ and you just see it being written everywhere. Oh, we are teaching little children the word of God and uh, in the uh, walls, you just see different things. The Ten Commandments written boldly there so that they could memorize. You write it on the wall, you write it on the board, you put it, you put a, uh, any almanac that has to do with all those words, so that it will settle in our hearts, not just for us to read, but we will read, meditate, and the Bible says it in that verse four. We will win favor with it, and we will win good name. It's in the sight of God and in the sight of men. As much as we are not men pleasers, but we will win good favor. I'm, I'm wondering how somebody can win favor. It can be favored, but this time around, he said, we will win it. Man. So those are much grace, abundant grace. Exceeding grace that is bestowed on his beloved when we have his word. And who is the word? What is the word? It's Jesus. Amen. When we have him in every area of our life, mm. every area, every area, every facet of our life, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, the, so to. Like you said, to win favor is we doing our part, you know, and God will do his part. God is a constant. Yeah. We are the variable, you know, yeah. where if God is always ready to provide. Mm -hmm. We are the ones that might be shaky. But when we do our part, God's part will be guaranteed, you know. Man. So, so it, it's all up to us. The, the ball is in our court, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's for us to do our part, you know. We are the variable. God is the constant. And it will continue to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, tomorrow is the public holiday out here. So, mm. Which yeah, one is that? I think it's a Muslim holiday. It's the birthday of Muhammad. Oh. Oh. Uh, so I won't, won't be okay, at work. Then. You said what? Right. I said it's okay then. Uh, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll take tomorrow off so that... Uh, okay. I can have a life with my wife. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Enjoy her. <laughs> Ooh, dude, dude. So we're back yeah. on Thursday, God willing. By the grace of God. Okay. All right. God bless you.